And right now on the Newsmaker Hotline, Cheryl Atkinson, investigative correspondent uh, for the Washington Bureau of CBS News. Now, Cheryl is somebody I have greatly admired as a reporter over the years, but she's really been on this Benghazi story from day one, asking the hard questions, uh, peppering the administration with questions, and, and frankly, at times, being stonewalled. And uh, I'm glad to have you, Cheryl. How are you this morning? Thank you. I'm great, thanks. Uh, let's talk about the you know, look. The, the the president seems to suggest, oh well, you know, we've 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 given a lot of answers. Uh, Jay Carney says well, we have continued to answer every question about uh, what happened in Benghazi, and we are not obstructing in any way this investigation. I would suspect, based on my following of your reporting, that you have a different sense of that. Well, I I just continue to not understand how. Um Saying it over and over again, they seem to think, makes it so. Um, there are so many outstanding questions. Some more questions certainly have been answered over the months as Congress has threatened to hold up nominations and so on. But there are still many, many unanswered questions. Um, none of my Freedom of Information requests have been responded to or um, netted any information at all. Uh, the video they promised last Thanksgiving never came out, surveillance video of the attacks. Uh, a lot is unanswered. All right, so, but we, yesterday, we heard Jay Carney say, oh, you know, this is old news. Benghazi happened a long time ago. And we've heard the former Secretary of State, Hillary Clinton, say, What difference at this point does it make? So I ask you that question. Why do we need these answers? Well, I, I think just from a news standpoint, uh, all the things that I've covered over the years, having, I guess it was the first ambassador killed in 30 years, and four Americans killed on what is technically U.S. soil overseas, uh, under many uh, questionable circumstances, I think there have been some questions uh, truly answered about why security was pulled back uh, beforehand, despite requests otherwise. But there have been conflicting reports as to why there was no rescue attempt, um, why the guys were left there, uh, why there was no, according to the administration, no military resources close by on 9-11 in a very, very hot spot of the globe in North Africa, um, and also still unanswered questions about the spin afterwards and how it came to be that officials said there were probably not terrorists involved when, in fact, they knew all along that there probably were. Cheryl Atkinson, she's the investigative correspondent in the Washington Bureau for CBS News, and she's our guest. And, uh, Cheryl, I, I watch these press briefings from the State Department and the White House often, and I, I see whenever you try to get to something, it seems like the White House spokesperson or the State Department spokesperson says, oh, I refer you to the State Department, or I refer you to the White House, or I refer you to FBI, I refer you to CB, uh, CIA, I refer you to the uh, Pentagon. What happens when you actually go, you get referred, you follow up, you ask the same question to those other agencies? Do you feel sometimes that they're all referring to each other instead of actually answering questions? Well, yes. I mean, I get virtually nothing. And in fact, um, the White House told me several months ago when I was pursuing a host of unanswered questions that there would be no more answers for me on Benghazi. I mean, they flat out said because I was making regular calls and giving them lists of questions that were outstanding, and they just said that was it. And it lose my number, Cheryl. Yeah. You yeah. Know, they, they also would say things like, all those questions have been answered. Read the material. And I would say, well, no, they haven't. You know, I, I've looked at the material. And these questions haven't been answered, but they would just keep insisting that they had been. All right, so the latest development in this story is that apparently there are some people who work uh, at state and some people who work at the CIA. Many of them, we're told, perhaps were on the ground that day in Benghazi who now want to tell their stories. And they can't really do that because they can't talk to their lawyers about the classified information. The lawyers are seeking guidance on under what circumstances may I talk to my client about these classified issues. And Apparently, they're getting zero response, sort of a catch-22. They can't testify until they clear it through their lawyers, and their lawyers can't get clearance to hear the testimony that is top secret from their very clients. Well, as, as of yesterday, when I last checked, there had still, once again, been zero response from the agencies, the State Department, Defense Department, and CIA, to a congressional request to help figure out the process, uh, at least disclose the process, so that these employees could be represented by private attorneys in the way that you described. Um, once again, sort of no answer, just floats out there in the air. And I would say there's been, there's been a pattern in my experience. Um, this is not the first administration to do so, but certainly I've been covering stories that have demonstrated, you know, how, how much they, when you say Stonewall, simply don't respond. Often they don't respond at all to Congress. They don't respond at all to freedom of information requests and press inquiries if they don't like them. They just, you, you hear silence. 
And oftentimes, you know, they're right. It goes away. People quit pursuing it or forget about it, and maybe that's what they're counting on. Oh, but here's my follow-up question to that. When you, as a reporter ask questions and you get this sort of runaround and this sort of incalcitrance this sort of i'm not going to answer that or just being ignored what does that generally tell you as a reporter well i think you know brian i mean that makes you feel like where, where there's smoke there's fire i certainly don't know all the answers but i have spoken to some people um off camera in ways that i can't report yet including at least one who's talking to congress now and they do have uh, information that would shed more light on this issue, um, information that maybe the administration doesn't want the public to hear. So I, I, I think, you know, when, when they act this recalcitrant about turning over information and answering basic questions on something that I think independently any journalist would have to consider very, very important or any American, then you do have to wonder what they're trying to uh from from being disclosed. Cheryl Atkinson, the House Oversight Committee has come out with a preliminary report, and there were three major findings there that weren't part of the independent investigation that the State Department conducted. The first was that Secretary of State Hillary Clinton did, in fact, sign off on the reduction of security uh, uh, funding for the consulate in Benghazi. The second was that the administration did, in fact, alter the talking points that had come from the CIA that Susan Rice then used on the Sunday shows. And the third was, despite the administration's claims, the altering of those talking points had nothing to do with national security, even though that's what the administration had said. Now, does your reporting back up those findings? Because Jay Carney in the White House says that this is just a political job. Um, on the point, on the talking points, yes, my reporting backs that up. I haven't been able to view the email that the Republicans on the Oversight Committee claim, or the cables that um, Mrs. Clinton signed authorizing the reduction of security. Um, I do believe, just have, from having dealt with the investigators on that particular committee, that they probably didn't make that up. The reason they can't release the emails and some of the supporting documentation is because the administration did turn over some documents, um, and classif they're classified. So mm -hmm. it's not as though we couldn't have them if the administration would declassify them and allow us to see them, but a lot of this material remains classified, even though I'm told by my sources that originally much of it was not classified, so it somehow became classified over the course of this investigation, whereby even Republicans who um, were allowed to view it and Democrat, their colleagues, were told that they couldn't make copies sometimes when they were reviewing certain materials. They were told that it had to stay in a room. They had to take handwritten notes. Um, there have been quite a few restrictions on these documents and materials in many cases. Cheryl, I guess, I one really quick follow-up. I'm just curious, as a journalist, uh, it, you must be thrilled that your colleagues seem to be ceding this story to you and allowing you to pretty much monopolize it. There are only a couple of other reporters that are really following it the way you are. Are you uh, uh, kind of surprised at that? Well, I wouldn't say I'm thrilled. I mean, honest, really, as a journalist, honestly, I like it when other journalists pitch in and help yeah. because it's very difficult to... Um, have an impact if the administration feels they can ignore one or two reporters or a couple of inquiries, they can kind of get past it. Um, and if everyone were to pepper them, as I think they have in, in other cases over other stories, if they were to be peppered every day, I think you'd get more answers sooner. But when a lot of journalists choose for whatever reason not to join in, I do think it makes it more difficult. Do you, do you want to speculate on the reason? I have no idea. All I think, right. You know, all I can tell you is, you know, <laughs> I, I went after many things in the Bush administration, um, mm -hmm. and a lot of reporters joined me in those efforts when there were things to be asked in the Bush administration. Um, with the Obama administration, sometimes I feel like it's uh, I'm, I'm alone with a few other journalists, and I can't say why that is. I don't know. All right. Well, Cheryl Atkinson, I, I really have very much admired your work on this. I, I, I urge you, and I know I don't need to urge you because you will anyway. Stay on it. And come back anytime you have something to talk about. We'd love to have you back on. I will. Thanks for having me. Cheryl Atkinson, who is the investigative correspondent for the Washington Bureau of CBS News and someone who has very much been on the Benghazi story. A 